If the hypothesis is that he's been shown the development of his ego along his timeline through the way stations of the friends that he knew, mm. the access that they as identified projective identity um, complexes mm. move in and out of association to him through an access code. And if the narcissism then is not one of character, but one of adaptation and defense, then what can we say about the kind of mistakes? Because that was the question it seems that's been raised yeah. about me having made the, potentially some kind of mistake. What kind of mistake would such a man make mm. in his relationship to women? Yeah. Understanding how to interpret dreams can be one of the most useful tools for personal development and therapeutic practice. It need not be complicated either. Of course, a strong understanding of human biopsychosocial dynamics, as per psychosystems analysis, as well as Steve and Pauline Richards' superposition theory and dialectical syncretism, is highly advised. But the most important thing to getting started is simply the right etiquette and rapport with the psyche. In this video, everything just mentioned is demonstrated live. You'll see Steve and Pauline Richards, depth psychologists with 43 years of frontline clinical experience each, work in real time with two dreams in a series they had never been presented with before. We hope that by following along with us, you'll experience an original cutting edge perspective on how to approach the phenomenon of dreams, both in terms of the images and the narratives that arise and what they mean, but also how to conduct yourself in a manner most conducive to ongoing rapport with and reciprocal assistance from the unconscious. For context, the dreams both come from a patient of mine who kindly gave his full permission for this video to be made. You can check the description for the timestamps. The first clip shows the first dream in the series, before we knew it would become a series, which was shared with Steve and Pauline in an IPSA professional training seminar in December 2022. The second clip dates to roughly six weeks later. It would be best to view both in sequence as presented, so you have the opportunity to see how the unconscious of the person literally responded to the interpretation in an ongoing dialectic with ego consciousness. We really hope that you enjoy. It was to do with a girlfriend that he'd had before, and in, in the dream was kind of just walking down the street and he thought he saw this previous girlfriend from, I can't remember how long, how long ago it was, for about 10 years, I think, um, walking towards him and he, in the dream, he kind of ignored her. Um, I was like, was that her? Was that really her? Was that really her? That type of thing. And then he saw her again coming towards her and coming towards him and he kind of stopped and, and, and was like, oh, I thought I just saw you walk by just now. So that was enough to sort of, uh, the first time he ignored her, the second time he said, like, wait a minute, I thought I just saw you there. And she, she said, yes, um, that was my wife. Um, and I'm married to her. I'm, I'm a lesbian now, um, which isn't accurate in real life at all. Um, but the, the, the thing that stood out to me was that was obviously important insofar as the sexuality of the girl had changed and she was married to herself. But the thing around sexuality, obviously, is like, what, what could that mean? Because immediately, you know, you can go with a Freudian view, and that's one thing. You can go with a Jungian view, and it's like, this, this is your anima taking on a certain form. Um, I say the spokesperson of the instincts, in a way, I think was the phrase that Jung used, I think. Um, but none of those appear to be particularly useful. Um, one thing that hit my mind straight away was, say, interpreting something like that. And I think you said something like this before, Steve, uh, about... Um, I can't remember if this was on a Young to Live By video or if it was from, from like an outtake or something like that. There, are, in, a, in a sexual way, there is a potential reason why men would be attracted to lesbian women in, term, in a Paleolithic environment in terms of accessibility. Um, but the guy's never had an interest in that kind of thing. So my interpretive knowledge ran out straight away. And then I was up against a symbol that's, say, politically incorrect. Um, and I don't know what it means.
to okay. be honest. Thanks, James. Well, obviously, I don't know the case. Uh, I don't know the history. Therefore, I don't know the context. And um, and thank you for sharing that. But that is the limitation, isn't it? Is, is that what you've actually shared is, is, is all that you can go with. Um, right. OK, the, the, the first thing I, I would do is not interpret it. And I mean internally now um, to come up with a, a facsimile interpretation that would fit a model like Jung or anything else as such, but I will make an interpretation because otherwise we have nothing to say. And that's the problem. We always interpret. To say that I choose not to interpret is an interpretation of the material to some extent, even that is, so we can't escape it. So that said then, when the context is not known and there's only the pre presenting images and the, the, there's, there's a limit to what you, you can uh, go, on, uh, go on, then I would default in a reductive sense to the lowest possible level of resolution, which is also the widest and the oldest. And therefore then it's likely to be that there's a representation in there of things which are psychodynamic, but also other things too. So when you mentioned um, a kind of, uh, I think you did, I'm not sure if you did or not, a primordial or primeval um, context for, for some, you did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's likely to be the baseline that you need to go to in order to understand anything else that rests upon it. And if we don't consider that, then we're on shaky ground about understanding anything downstream of that, that fundamental thing. So do, do you have any indication, and I'm going to have to ask for some, some context, yeah, um, as to whether there might be, in, in your estimation, a, a paleolithic element for the symbolism for this, this person? possibly so there, there was there was a bit more i've just just been reminded um, there was a little bit more um he wanted to he wanted to kiss her and what went through his mind when he woke up um so this wasn't as i think i'm getting this i think i'm getting this right it wasn't in the dream explicitly but upon waking there was an interpretation there like a clash from the culture really to be like was i attempting to uh convert her in some capacity from her current say lesbian state um to, towards uh you know finding himself attractive in that sense yes i can definitely see something there it was but the overall symbol will say of the sexuality of the person involved that was the part I, I would be hesitant to drop down to the primordial aspect of per se but in terms of what was recalled upon waking yeah okay did yeah. he um did he convey did he actually see the the partner of the ex-girlfriend the female partner in the dream the dream yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um was there any outstanding did he did he know her was she real in an outer sense a representation of a real person yeah yeah and and so that 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 so that, that's the two confusing things so for myself there was the, there was the um there was a sexuality image but it was the ex-girlfriend twice so she was now a lesbian and married to herself as a separate entity right. yeah right right Okay, so there was there's a doubling of the representation. Yeah, girlfriend, right? Yeah, um, and it was a mirror, was it? it well, not so much a mirror, but an, an exact replica. Exact, exact replica. No differences at all. No differences at all. Um, and why? As, 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 okay. as remember, one went by first, ignored, and then the second one, and that's what sort of triggered him off. Just want to sort of talk to her. Right, got you. Okay, right. Well, I'd need to know more about that. Um, about that context um so I'm, I'm i'm not going to be able to deliver an accuracy enough uh, response i don't think on that if we were to be superficial about it um and if it was freudian there might be a narcissistic element in there which would explain the self-marriage but you'd have to bring in young to explain that and say that it's the anima that's married to itself and therefore is narcissistic and therefore it's also freudian you could say all of that but there's not enough context to be sure about that. Um, the the idea, and, and it is popular with a lot of men, uh, the representation of women being together uh, in that erotic sense. Um, but my understanding of it with, should we say, heteronormative men, is that that's of interest to them, but the women have to be attractive in a normal heteronormative sense, uh, rather than, as you see, some examples of, of lesbianism 
appearing as an image. So in other words, not masculine, but they'll both be very feminine in a representational sense that the man would understand. And there are reasons for that, because obviously there's no competition. Mm -hmm. yeah. He doesn't have male competition. Uh, and if the man is heteronormative, he's not going to want to have fantasies about men. Other men being involved with women, he, he'll want himself involved with women. So, and then you follow that line of association with men, and then it'll it'll come through what that generally means, and that then can be elevated into a Jungian sense of the anima and all the things that follow from that, and that might be true, or it might not. It might just be purely Freudian. So, I would honestly need a bit more context on that one to to understand it. But the the, the context anyway, as I'm sure you're aware would have to involve the timeline of the individual, the relationship that he had to uh, that girl 10 years before. Therefore, to what extent that relationship was actualized in a physical sense as well, or was it more of a Dante's uh, Beatrice kind of relationship, you know, mm -hmm. platonic in that ordinary sense of the word? Uh, how did the relationship end? Um, presuming it did, of course, because it's, 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 you said it's a past girlfriend 10 years yeah. ago. So what state did it leave that young man in? Uh, what relationship is he in now? Uh, has he been in other relationships? What's the evolution of that? And then we'll get some idea of why it presents in that way. Because that's a very specific construct that it's very, very specific. It's, it's generating something which is absolutely specific. So um, I think we'd need the whole context to understand what's going on. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's 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 already enormously val val valuable. I guess instead of looking for for an interpretation per se, it's more of a it's the moving between the representational levels, um, and and also then as well on that. Um, let's let let's say for example that the the narcissistic anima thing is is um, accurate at, at, at one level. It comes down to say communicating that to the patient as well might be an interesting thing to to consider. Yeah, presumably, yeah. presumably wouldn't be a good idea to do that not immediately yeah i mean obviously not knowing the context can't really give a response that's meaningful on that it would all be have to be hypothetical um and you know a freudian model and i'm not suggesting this is the case at all but i'm just suggesting how models collapse perceptions and they do and they distort when they do that uh, might suggest that there was uh, some uh, homosexuality in the dreamer which is symbolized in that way. It may be bisexuality that's, that's symbolized in that way. So he retains his ego identity. And then the, the, the homosexual element is put into the representational form of his anima, which divides and is married itself and therefore has a sexual relationship to itself. So that's narcissistic and maybe it's some kind of repressed homosexuality. So a kind of broadly psychodynamic view might say that, but I can't say that because i don't know the context and of course there's no judgments about any kind of combination of uh, sexual erotic or, or other relationship you know they're all valid ways of living a human life but that might be what's going on i don't know because i don't know the context so I do need to be careful about that of course of course of course yeah it's because uh, even you saying all of that i think that's probably absolutely fine on that to be honest because it's like when images like that arise um so i don't know what they mean you know and i think i think a lot of that is to do with the culture yeah, um yeah. and there's there's like there's like a paralyzing aspect to it to some degree with regards to that where it's like am i gonna get in trouble for saying something like this you know um yeah which is unfortunate and you can't avoid that necessarily um but yeah but he, he, hearing you talk a little bit about what it could mean working the ground up from the paleolithic yeah. perspective but then also a little bit of the Jungian style theory yeah. to help inform it that's given that's given a lot to work with to be honest well another Jungian sort of elaboration and it's Jungian style elaboration and it, it's it's um abstract unfortunately because again I don't know the context but purely from a theoretical perspective then you, you could say that that person left part of their anima with that girl and whatever mm -hmm. she's really doing yeah. in, in outer life is immaterial to what the image is doing on the inside of the man. Uh, and if it's dormant as a relationship that, 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 that in terms of his anima development was fixed at that time, then that becomes a kind of narcissism, not in the outer sense, but the inner sense, 
that the the anima complex is in love with the anima archetype if you get as a representation mm -hmm. so whatever that girl had projected onto her at that time uh would have been a platonic and i mean platonic form not platonic relationship is, is misunderstood these days uh, had its own autonomy and was projected onto that girl then the, the relationship ended but between those two moments the anima complex formed and then those two are in relationship on the inside as if they are married and then separated from the ego of the individual person whoever he may be and whatever his context is now so therefore a lot of his capacity to love and relate is attached to the eroticized relationship between the platonic anima and the anima complex and the image of the girl represents that so does her, her split the walking past which on two occasions which generates the split it also suggests a timeline and a journey and then there's the action of the ego in communicating to the image of that girl and then what he wanted to do in relationship to her, which was probably symbolic of a connection that is not necessarily phallic in that Freudian sense, um, because the mouth is symbolic of a lot of things and, and kissing is a symbolic thing in many, many ways, uh, romantically, rather than just necessarily penetrative, phallic sex, reproductive sex. It can mean something else uh, at so many different levels. So that would be more of a Jungian elaboration on that basic thing. And I'm sure Freudian would say, but there's still an element of narcissism there because this is operating on the inside and it's not relating to the outside. Whatever's attached to those images are internal. So that is not being given into whatever relationship you may be in at the moment. It just turns up that way. Now, I can't say because I do not understand the context and I don't know the wider, yeah. but if, you know, just talking theoretically, there are a number of different ways of looking at it. Uh, the Freudian would be all over the narcissism and the Kleinian would be on about the object relations element. So it would be the person, if there is one that this person is relating to in the moment externally is not directly represented in the dream. There's a separation, the object relationship to the outer, outer world's not there. There is a split. So they would talk about the splitting of the object relation and then an inverting of libido towards the image on the inside. And the Kleinian would say there's narcissism again. But Freudians do that. They go for narcissism all the time, even when it's not there. They overstate it. Just like the Jungians find the shadow everywhere, the first thing a Freudian will find is narcissism. And they over, over amp it. So we have to be careful about that. But what we do have are the facts of the dream, yeah. as reported. And there's obviously a bigger context, which I'm not aware of, but there is that. I think we can safely say there is something about the relationship to that girl, which has not been fully integrated into the personality of, of the person. Uh, and the image of, of the girl now, as it's expressed, is collapsing into itself. So to some extent, that image is not even releasing itself to the ego. So the ego can release that to anyone else. And that's not really narcissism. That would be my point. That's an unconscious psychodynamic with respect to the ego. Um, that, that something is being withheld internally, separate to his conscious will or intention, perhaps. Therefore, he can't release it. So knowing why that has happened, why the anima has married itself, you know, is important. Um, and then we've got a number of different levels there. So we've got the Paleolithic, and I followed on from what you said to give that explanation. And then the absence of any context, I always go there and, and, and build forward. Then we've got the bifurcation, so to speak, of the, um, the Freudian and Kleinian on one side and Jungian on the other, possible interpretations. And the last one was this idea that, that it's not narcissistic because the ego is not involved. Okay, that's what I would say. Um, I hold back, obviously, on being corrected on that because it might turn out there is narcissism. But my immediate instinctive response, so to speak, would be this is not narcissistic. This is a representation of an internal division that is outside of the scope of normal ego consciousness. But it does have to do with, apparently, a marriage of the imago to itself, the imago being the representation of the relationship of that girl. So what was projected onto her? How did the relationship end? Uh, then that which is internalized, which is the complex and its relationship to the platonic uh, imago 
if they are married, they become as if one, and yet they are separated too, because the dream ego experienced them as separate and had to be told that they were married. So there's so much that could go into that. Uh, and, you know, you do need to be careful, obviously, because we can do more harm by probing sometimes than we can by, by waiting for the appropriate moment. But it might be worth spinning, should he have married that girl, or does he believe he should have done and he didn't? Um, and it might not be because that's real, as in a reality orientation, but there's a, a residual relationship internally to whatever was projected onto that girl, which is still operating. And then the summation of all of this might be that it, in effect, it marries itself. The complex marries the platonic form and retains libido, uh, re retains elements of personality that could otherwise be uh, integrated into the personality and then released into the world. But at the moment, the, the psyche then, this is pure Jungian, but modified in an IPSA way, the psyche is sending the representation of this is the internal state at the moment of play to do with your relationship to your relating function and system that they have collapsed into relationship to one another and are not being released to you but the dream is telling you that is what it is doing that's the resultant image of that process so that's another way of looking at it do, do you think from an instinctive perspective that might be a protective mechanism because if, if this particular person is unable to uh, release uh, that aspect of the animal or relate to the person that they're with that currently was in the, in, in the way that they want to, uh, that they may then fall back on their own of, instinct yes. in, in a protective sense and that might then appear in, you know, in the form of these yeah. um two women uh lesbian women uh, in a sort of a, a narcissistic yeah state yeah but the narcissism really is, is just a yeah. self-protection yeah I, I, I would agree state. because if, if we use the term lesbian in this culture that has a different meaning than it would have meant in greece on the island of lesbos yes, totally. and has a different meaning that it would have meant when we were younger yeah, um true. so there's the cultural overlay and then there's the, the why is it choosing that you know that so it's it's as you said earlier when you were you were quoting Jung, he, he basically said that the archetype is the self-portrait of the instinct so if it's the anima as an archetype then it's instincts which are producing the archetype you cannot have a self-portrait unless it represents that which it represents so therefore the the archetype represents an instinct and probably a meta instinct yeah. Because it's providing a meta instinctive scenario that does not have a, a correlation externally as this is literally presented. It is therefore a symbol. So it means something else than what it's presenting as being. And uh, if we then go back to instinct and, and relate to that, it's likely to be that this is the state of adaptation of the individual internally and externally presented as a scenario which sums up the whole of the biopsychosocial stack for them uh go on sorry no i was just going to add yeah. to that Steve, the the, the um, apparent impediment of talking about these things are, as in that they would be sanctioned by the culture yeah. nowadays for, for talking about them might actually um be have more to do with maybe a, a personal reservation say about to, may there may be that feeling that it's something that can't be discussed within the relationship because yeah. it would it would be a problem so yeah. you know uh that may then be represented as something that can't be spoken about in the culture but it's really something that can't be spoken about within the context of, of that given relationship it could be it's yeah. just been transferred across yeah it could be there's so many possibilities and yeah. not having the context uh, yeah. doesn't help no, sure. yeah. but the uh, early relationships early infatuations are prime imprinters of imagos of that which they represent in anticipation should we say, of that which is latent within the genome and the field. And it's particularly so with cases of anima and animus because of the biological and genetic and field imperative uh, to mate and relate, which, which pushes us and we cannot escape that. So very often past relationships will turn up in dreams uh, because of that prime imprint. It doesn't mean there's anything of value in that past relationship necessarily. It's just that it represents the field as a whole that for a while was projected 
at a stage in life when the imprinting process was important and that becomes the template for further relationships so you can you can see how that could be another layer of symbolism and not even relate to the actuality of the relationship in the past so to tease that out we need context and uh, what happens when the person tests this when they're presented with, the, with this information these ideas there's possibilities and we have to be careful obviously how we present them um, but when they are presented and worked through in an affect and uh, meta instinctive scenario sense the truth of it will emerge out so very often past relationships are nothing other than um, icons windows stained glass windows through which the platonic form is shone for a while and it's taken that form um, it means it can mean nothing more than that or it can mean there are things which are missing at the moment in relationship to the individual person and their life circumstances so there's a rewind back to that to try to access the energy that's the libido and the drive whatever that is locked up in that past representation of the platonic form and it's capped by the complex from the past we have to be aware of that too there was, was such a such an if, if if you don't mind me saying such an elegance in your in your um uh, potentials of, in, of interpretations there because they're images obviously i'm not used to working with that type of image with people at all um but seeing how oh, it was sort of translated from one representation representational form into several different others that then coherently fits in with the rest of the core psychodynamic model i think that was the part that was generally missing an image just like what the hell does this mean but you translated it into something that fits with the rest of the model well and i was going to actually ask you the question that, that pauline raised a moment ago about the whole defense mechanism thing and that's because the idea of a complex marrying the platonic form um it sounds so um why 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 would it do that type of thing like there's there's meant to be energy and libido released from the person's life mm -hmm. into the world why would it do that and it must be some kind of protective thing but then you said steve um uh almost like an, an attempt to to go back but i presume there'd be some kind of repetition compulsion there presumably that doesn't involve that relationship necessarily at all in terms of if we could be talking about the anima in the broadest sense there must have been relational things before that shaped this person to be more say platonically inclined um not 100 percent accurately because there'll always be freudian elements there of course there will be but in terms of looking at a general say anima timeline thing i imagine would be probably quite useful in that regard um yeah, yeah. there's a lot there's a lot to uh, consider and um making an attempt if you could persuade this 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 guy to make an attempt to understand it in other words to make an interpretation but not collapse into the interpretation then that is a signal to the psyche as a whole. And I'm speaking in more in a Jungian way here because I think it's appropriate to do that, to utilize that language, would prompt a response from the psyche mm. without the ego saying, this is what it is, and I know what it is. It's saying, this is provisional, this, this is my impression, but am I right? You know, and you ask in a respectful way, you're likely to, or he will be likely to, to get uh, an appropriate move on from that because it's a spontaneous impression isn't it of the state of the inner world if we think in a purely Jungian sense so therefore then something is happening right now which has made that dream for that young guy I'm assuming he's a young man from what you've said um, need to receive that and to remember the dream so there's something about where where the representation of his anima then is and why why the anima would marry the uh, so to speak well that's what the dream has said the dream has said that that's happened it's actually said that it's happened so the next question would be if we were being cognitive would be well when did that happen when when how long has this this marriage you know uh, been around where and under what conditions and to answer that, we have to be not cognitive. We've got to get inside, or this young man has to get inside that meta instinct, because it will be one. Uh, and the, the complexity of that and its rootedness in, in, the, in the genome itself and in the ontogenesis of that person's timeline and find out how it all distilled itself out. So that is now an appropriate representation of his inner world, which itself will mirror what is happening or not happening externally in his outer world. Uh -huh. 
Uh, and that would then tell us why it is an entirely appropriate symbol from the perspective of the Jungian unconscious that it produces that uh, as a symbol. Yeah. Uh, but say the Freudian would think, well, you know, if you're marrying your, yourself or your, your, your so-called Jungian anima is, is marrying itself, then that's a form of narcissism, which means you're not relating, which means you're not giving. And, and you know, I, I think that will only go so far in, in terms of an explanation. And I, I do think that's a, a fault with Freudian uh, modeling that it it collapses too easily on the edge of the the dynamic unconscious and it doesn't understand those dynamics so this will not be um a genean complex this is a deep structure anima complex the pure f distillation of the uh, the anima type as represented but it's so close to that which the platonic form has imprinted itself upon that they're virtually indistinguishable hence they are married so um, I would say access is necessary to the platonic form and the uh, meta instinctive scenarios that the genome has anticipated that it will be played out through. Uh, but this is all perfectly normal. It's just that most people don't experience the normality of it consciously because they don't look or they forget the dreams or they, they're just pushed along by the passage of events in daily life. But representation is only significant to a limited amount. It doesn't mean that the past relationship is in and of itself important because even that is only a representation of the platonic form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Imprinting thank you. is significant because that happened at a specific time. But that's about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The you know, I, I find with um with clinical work, sometimes dreams, I I think anyway, I, I hope, um, are quite easy to interpret. Um, so it, almost like an intuition from within, as yeah. if or even sometimes this is gonna sound really, really strange, almost as if before the person's finished telling the dream, something constellates and it's almost like you know what to say. There are others that just appear to be um impenetrable. Yeah. Really, to be honest. But watching watching you closely there for what you you, you seem to do, you went from I mean you mentioned you haven't mentioned Freud, Melody Klein, Jung. I think there was somebody else that you mentioned as well. And you kind of went with dialectical syncretism. <laughs> Oz. Oz. Oh yes, yes, yes. IPSA yes. model. Yeah. Yeah. No, model. The, the, the IPSA modification of Jung, but meaning you didn't collapse in, into them. You went with a dialectical syncretism approach to, to sort of do a, um, a broad sweep or something, something like, like that. Yeah. So that's, that's a useful thing. I guess I can, I can use going, going forward if stuck on something. Yeah. So look at it from these different angles and then dialectical syncretism to come in. I've not done that with dream interpretation before with dialectical syncretism. I mean, it's, it's interesting to watch you do it. It's an interesting way of doing it. And it also draws out the limitations of models. Uh, Jung's model, too, is also a collapsed state in and of itself. And it does reflect his personal experience, which, again, is why my default starting position is instincts and the genome and the, you know, the evolutionary model, because no one can disagree with that. They, they all surely can agree that that is real. So we have to start from firm ground and then see how that appears in representational form downstream of it. And then we can we can test the interpretations, but it'd be very easy to, to walk off with something like that and uh, imprint Jung onto it. And it might be completely not the, the case. I think it is actually, to be honest, Jungian, I would say, on balance. I, I don't think that Freud explains it adequately at all. Um, and I was trying to say that in real time, that my own processing is saying that it isn't narcissism in that ordinary sense. It, it's different. It's on another level. And it, it will have to do with how things join up in that individual at this stage in his life consciously so he can release that into the world. It's not been released, I think. I think it's still, it's locked. It's a, but it's dynamic, but locked. Mm -hmm. It's restless, in other words. And that's likely to surface in other forms if we follow our model of superpositioning. So that restlessness that is represented in the dream should be detectable at other levels of uh, resolution, including how this person is living their life. And that's where we'll see if there's any neurosis. That's where we'll see the manifest symptoms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I had other things to bring up as well on this, but I think it's uh, you, you've given so much on that front. Um, 
I'm happy to, to discuss it further, James. No, because 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 things things that you've um, you've described will will definitely in some capacity go into um, the other dream that was that was given by this guy. Um, so it's, it's probably best. Okay. I leave, I, I leave it there. I think if if there's any further developments, when we come back in the new year, I guess I could try and um, potentially yeah. raise it again. But yeah, thank you, thank you. It's been amazingly valuable to hear you, to see you do that in real time. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thanks for bringing that. Thank you. As said at the end of that clip, there were indeed significant developments in the new year. The dreamer had another dream, clearly as part of a series, which appeared to respond to the interpretation just given regarding access to the platonic form being required for his case to improve. What follows is that second dream and Steve and Pauline's live, worked-through approach and interpretation. Hi James, hello, Hi, James. hello again. Good to see you again. Likewise guys, likewise, likewise. Um, so this is um, a continuation then of that dream that we discussed. Yes, so it was the end of last year, um, we presented it in a seminar, a dream from a patient who kindly gave their permission for me to, to to do so. So the guys who are on the course, um, the professional training course at the moment will be familiar with that. But in sort of like a super brief rundown, um, there, there was there was a dream in which um, the guy met. Um, I mean, there's obviously lots of details that we, we, we could go into, but the guy met with his ex-girlfriend from about 10 years ago twice in the dream yeah. as two independent characters. And they were married to each other. And that kind of shocked and surprised the dreamer. And he didn't really know what that meant. And neither did I. So I asked you guys, and it was a really interesting conversation. And you, you suggested that the guy will, have, will need to have access to the platonic form. Because by having his ex-girlfriend there twice married to itself or herself suggests perhaps that it's the platonic form and the anima complex that have married each other a priori to ego consciousness. And hence, that's a literal work through psychodynamic of how relating itself is being capped or impeded literally before any of that information reaches ego consciousness. So I asked, um, I asked or in, um, advised i guess the patient to go into self-hypnosis and access or ask to access the platonic form literally just to go into a trance state and be as permissive as possible with it um, can i be allowed to access the platonic form and the guy said uh, that the trance was uh, very very deep immediately um in a way that it, it he felt very very strong rapport with his unconscious um but then he disappeared into into a pseudo sleep is the way that he described it for about two hours, not asleep, not awake. But it's as if suddenly everything went boom. and he came out of it two hours later, feeling a little bit disappointed. He then goes to bed and he has a dream and he reported the dream back to me. And he felt it was very, very significant because it seems to, in one way, address the question of accessing the platonic form. But it seems in another way, it doesn't. And I'm looking at the dream too, and I'm like, this is this is very interesting stuff, and I'd love to get your guys' input on it, if that's okay. Yeah, no problem. Just on the idea of um, sleep and hypnosis being cross-modal to one another, um, hypnosis, as the term was coined by James Braid, means that. It means a nervous sleep. Um, so it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, and broadly, we could say it's hypnoidal when it's neither one nor the other, and that, that's a term which uh, the old-time hypnotherapists who were you know clinicians medical cl clinicians they would use that term and uh, regard it as being hypnoidal so in and of itself that's interesting because there's um a cross-modal zone there within which information when it superpositions can become apparent you know it's it's like the the hindu idea of a, a bardo a cross-modal zone an interval or a gap within which things can happen or we can become aware of that normally we don't so yeah, that's that's a useful thing in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, apparently, with this this guy, it's fairly frequent for that kind of thing to happen. Mm. Um, which you know, obviously, hypnosis is a very relaxing thing, but it's also a very active thing too. It's not drifting off to 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 sleep. It's very very focused. So interesting the way that you frame that as being kind of like a bardo zone. Yeah. Um, so, so presumably then there was information that was being processed and worked through that was then ready to then appear at night, say, in the dream. 
of the patient, which would have been, I guess, a few hours later or so. He said yeah. it in the so, evening. So neurophysiology, you, you've got the reticular activating system and the conventional way of looking that, at that from a neurophysiological perspective would be to say it's a disorder of the reticular activating system, which is descriptive, but only within that level. Mm -hmm. And again, when we talk about superpositioning, we have to consider that, but also there are other things there. So what causes the apparent dysregulation, which might be a better term rather than disorder of the reticular activating system, is in and of itself important. So what led up to that and what continually utilizes that state for that person? which then provides the superpositioning opportunity for ego consciousness to experience these things in a different way. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, should we, should we jump into the dream? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah. So I've, I've, I've written it down. So forgive me for looking over in this direction, but um, so the dream begins with the uh, dreamer in the town around his house. Um, and it's filled with people from a foreign culture. Um, and he feels very uncomfortable about that, as if over time there's been more and more people of a foreign culture coming in um, to the area. And then he sees um, what he describes as a Western girl um, with pink hair, and he's filled with despair. Um, the way he described it was like um, there was no resistance to something anymore. Things were very foreign. They were very different. They were um, not going in a direction that he... Um, wanted them to go in let's say in like a cultural level and there's definitely a cultural part there but to him it felt more personal than that um, more affective if you like then the dream then cuts to the same town but the less built up areas on the periphery around the town and there's some kind of conflict going on and suddenly he uses this four digit specifically four digit code to jump through time it's a time travel code and suddenly he's in the present but yet the present is also him being back in school again. Um, and he's there with several people. Um, the two main ones are two friends from his teenage years. Um, one of them he never liked, and the other one he grew to hate due to circumstances across his timeline. So in real life, he doesn't like either of them. But in the dream, he's fine with them. They're just being teenagers with each other, um, talking with each other and stuff like that. Um so he has this four digit code he can use for time travel and these two friends have it too, possibly because he shared it with them. Then there's another friend who turns up who is uh, not really a friend, but the way he described it was a male acquaintance. And he's known this guy since nursery school. So way, 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 way longer um, across a longer period of his timeline, let's say, who was never really a friend. He was more sort of just omnipresent around him. So again, more like an acquaintance, but he couldn't be intimate with him um then there was a more recent friend who turned up from his adult years this time instead who also isn't a friend anymore at all and he has the code too so in total there are five of them that all have this time travel code um then they're in this they're in the school and an and assembly is about to begin with the teacher walking in the front and teaching stuff and whatever um, but there aren't enough seats for everybody there the most recent ex-friend from his adult years um, has to share a plastic chair with someone else sitting in front of him. And the dreamer sits there with his arms folded like this, I guess, watching the assembly. Then when the assembly is over, the dreamer then discusses this, this code with his friends. And the, he, he's, he, he says that he feels pretty good, that although he doesn't really like the people, he feels good that he's leading a conversation in some capacity. Um, but then he realizes they've all lost this code. It's completely gone. He had it written on there's four digits on his hand and it was wiped off and gone. Um, and everyone else has lost it too. And the dreamer is then left in kind of a sense of panic being like, how do I get this code back again? Um, I can't remember what it is. Um, then he says to one of his friends, be careful when using the code, do not get stuck in a mortal loop. Then suddenly, and this this is the part I think where um, I'd, I'd love to get your guys' input on it because I found this the most interesting. The dreamer then realizes what the true purpose of the time travel code is for. Um, but the dream seems to deliberately withhold that information from him. As if the dreamer can't know, but the dreamer in the dream does know that kind of thing. But he is told, or he feels it involves a pair of twin identical girls. It involves that. 
Um, and that obviously links back to the previous dream with the twin girls. So it involves that in some capacity. Um, and then the final shot of the dream is one of these lads wearing a massive diamond engagement ring. Really almost like comically big. Which one? Um, James, can I ask? Because... Yeah, um, I asked him that and it's not one of the named ones. It's a different one. Um, so someone who, uh, I think he said it was like someone who he recognises, but doesn't recognise. So not faceless, but um, present. Oh. Wearing, and and it's, it's uh, not clear, but he kind of feels that it is, that uh, he's proposed to the guy. But that's not made explicitly clear. Um, and that was the dream. That was that was the dream. Um, there's I've I've written a list, I guess, of questions that I could ask you guys about, but um, I'm wondering if if anything to that stands out to you um, by way of you know potential stuff we could work through. Well, potentially, there's a great deal. There. Well, there's what, always what, there's tons in it, isn't it? It's, what, uh, what do you think, it's, Paul? It's where to start. Um, well, I think we probably could do with asking a few more questions ourselves so, by way of clarification um the the girl with the pink hair uh, mm. i take it she was just a, a kind of anonymous female yes. uh, potentially or represent a uh, representative of, of the kind of persona that some women have in the culture today would, would, would that be accurate that's spot on but, again because I, I, sometimes i look at some experiences say i've had from my own dreams um and it's like sometimes there are there are just people that are like faceless that sort of blend in then there are others that almost appear in dreams as if you're supposed to know them in the context of a dream but you don't know them in real life and it would have been that particular category if that helps so recognizable in that sense but not real yeah and the, the, there seemed to be uh some disenchantment between the, the dreamer and that representation uh, of the feminine in in that broad sense but i mean would, would that be true to say as well yes so he felt very uncomfortable by these i guess a foreign culture um moving into his um not his hometown it's where he currently lives mm. um and that so that that generated an uncomfortable affect but seeing that girl with the pink hair it was almost like it's all over now there's nothing we can do to sort of um put things back to a way that he would prefer them to be you yeah. know okay yeah. Okay. Thank you, James. I mean, I'll ask Steve if he wants to ask anything and then maybe come back on that. I do have some thoughts. So, yeah, well, um, I think I'd rather hear right now, if that's yeah, sure. okay, James, um, the questions that, that, that you'd yeah. like to ask uh, with respect to your understanding of the, of the dream. Yeah, so uh, um, sure, I'm putting it into context, obviously, with the previous stream and everything that's sort of built up to it. So uh, one of the things I remember that you guys uh, said was um, when someone dreams of a previous relationship, it's not necessarily important at all in terms of that relationship. It's more, it could represent several different things, including just an echoing back to a previous era of time. And obviously the guy's got the time travel code, mm -hmm. you know, so there is an element of time, a jumping between time and almost a superpositioning of time. It's the present, but it's the past at the same time. Um, in, in, I guess, in sort of like a literary way, almost um complex has come to mind with that and the personal myth in general comes to mind with that but if the if the relationship's not necessarily important um that it seems to me that there's a potential confirmation in the dream that that's true because that girl from the first dream doesn't turn up at all she's not in there at all and the twin girls that are mentioned isn't explicitly her at all um what what the guy said is he doesn't know who those twin girls are but they may be they may be the pink haired girl he's not sure he's not sure um so 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 yeah in terms, in terms of the relationship not being super important i'm wondering if you take that as a potential confirmation signal to say yeah it's not that important really there's way more here that's more fundamental i would say it's a question of emphasis in the dream um it doesn't mean that that relationship's not important but as it's downstream of the original one it's clearly in a series then then if it were me i, I would look at it as if this is an emph emphasis uh, the interesting thing for me, the dynamic that's really interesting is the access code, because that's like a pin number, four-digit yes, pin yes. number. Four digits specifically. I, yeah, that was another thing, too, because I was thinking there's time travel and four digits could also be a, a year. It could. Yeah. It could. Yeah. Um, did he communicate to you what those digits were? Or is this something that we can discuss openly, the, the actual code? He or? doesn't know what, no. He doesn't know what, what the digits were, no. And, and he was 
panicking within the dream itself to be like what is it i can't remember and he was sitting there thinking about what it could be almost trying to piece it together but it wasn't going to work almost and the thing another thing he said was it was um being four digits that's simple should be a simple easy thing to remember but for some reason he just it was only four numbers but he just couldn't do it okay so um an access code then which is shared between these different characters but then is lost that suggests because you were talking about superpositioning of consciousness that suggests things that can be accessed and then things that can no longer be accessed that would uh, would have been called repression or suppression in the past say by freud or jung um but if it's if it's superpositioning we're thinking about then it's possible to have a new access code issued and if you lose your pin number you get a new one yeah. And um, who is the the executive personality amongst the the elements within the dream? And um, what I mean by, by that is that the dream ego is is definitely a resolved focus for all of us. We we feel it's one of us within the dream that that is that has that. But we need to remember that ego identified complexes are part of the ego in effect. And although they may appear to be different actors in a dream narrative, it's still the ego. So if someone were to repress or suppress or not fully articulate yet the superpositioning that's necessary to maintain access to these, these identified complexes, then finding that code might be important. However, there is an alternative, and that is that the losing of the code can also be important because it would mean that the ego identified complexes could no longer access the ego. And that's a positive spin on that. So the way to find out, I would suggest, would be to use a hypnotic method, a dissociative method. And we'd need to move on from the dream then and uh, engage the characters and the way to do that would mean that however they present themselves in the hypnotic uh, state would have to be taken as is. So we shouldn't go chasing for the exact representation of the images in the dream because these representations are transitory. Uh, they're generated more or less in the moment in real time. So once we've had a dream and the dream is gone, then the same uh, relationships can be represented differently. So the key seems to be literally access. Who has access? Is it favorable for the access code to be lost? Because that means that the ego identified complexes can no longer access the ego. Or is it unfavorable because they've gone into a state of what would have been called repression by Freud and Jung? I don't think it's repressed because it's represented. The thing that, that, that is, the for me anyway, the important linking elements is the fact that there is a code that was lost and if we take the the symbol of a four digits access code as being a literal but symbolic representation of access between the elements involved you can then use the suggestion or ask the question of the psyche can i have another access code issued please or is there a reason why those elements are not allowed to access me the subjective ego any further and then take it from there right right that seemed to be reflected in what, what you've just said steve in the way the changing nature of the female characters as well yeah. um as you say uh you know, they may be represented differently in different states and in, in different dreams, um, in different hypnoidal states. Uh, but as I think um, James was suggesting that um, the girl with the pink hair uh, that was, you know, reported to him could well have been um, the two female uh, women who were, were conjoined yes, as well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we've probably got some kind of deep structure meaning there that's being represented differently yeah. uh, by the different surface structure representations of yeah. the feminine. Yeah. So um, as I think you're suggesting, having a, a different access code or a different way in, uh, or maybe even going in at a different level might then help to um, 
unlock the meaning yeah. behind both those representations and maybe there were others as well that we don't yeah. know about but yeah. those were mentioned principally yeah. um and to take it back even maybe a little bit further and i probably need a bit of clarification from james on this was whoever was taking that assembly was that a female character do you know was it a female teacher heading that up or or is, is that a detail that's not available to us well that the way the guy described that part of the dream was it was a little bit blurry so it was like the assembly itself was um it wasn't important who was running it what the content was or anything like that the emphasis in the in the in the, in the, in the dream was on um it's like rows of plastic seats and it was the most recent friend of the guy who's not his friend anymore it's almost like fighting for space really in front of the dreamer and has to end up sharing a plastic seat which i imagine would be very uncomfortable to do sort of squish yourself together with the with the arms together and stuff like that but no he didn't report whether or not um, mm. there was there was a female teacher or not but it didn't seem to be that any emphasis on that right right i mean obviously um you know i i asked that question for for clarification because you know female teachers for young men can have uh you know a, a very uh influential effect on them and on on the way in which their anima or their relating function develops so it was just to establish that really but that, that's fine if if that wasn't the emphasis then obviously that's fine well he he has he has described to me before independent to the dream that he's had big issues with female teachers before so you, your intuition there um definitely looks to be going after something nice. um yeah big issues with female teachers in and he's, he's he's reported other dreams to me too um where he frequently dreams about female teachers some of them in a good light some of them yeah. in a very bad light yeah. um but they they are part of the overall say cast of characters of when he goes to sleep quite frequently um just not seemingly in this one so that might be interesting that they there was a big opportunity for one to be there perhaps but wasn't there yeah um, for whatever reason that, that that you know the way that the um the dream evolved it didn't well he didn't form that impression about the situation that he was in so we obviously we, we have to take that into account but as you say also uh, uh, any kind of um previous information that we have from him about his relationship to uh, other dreams and, and female teachers and the like so yeah it was just to establish that james so thank you for that Oh, thank you thank you i mean so, so from what you, what you guys have both said it sounds like there's there's deep structure complex elements in the dream and there's more surface structure or genean complexes in the dream too so would it be safe to say that probably these different lads um because what, what stood out to me was it's almost like there's a there's an anima timeline but with blokes present because there's a different relational quality with those four different friends that stretch from nursery school all the way up to the recent present mm. um you know not as an anima timeline in terms of women but they would still have a, a, a relational quality to them so dotting who he was i guess his identity across time in some capacity yeah. would those lads then be representative of identified complexes and hence steve what you were mentioning about the access code stuff i would say, yeah. I would say we identified complexes for sure yeah because uh peers as we're growing up, form a kind of projective identification for us anyway. And this is where the, the Jungian idea of shadow projection basically comes in. That's a form of Kleinian projective identification, um, you could say. But uh, stepping aside from, from Klein's work and even from Jung's work, my own gut instinct mm -hmm. on this is that they are identified complexes to do with the development of that person's uh, identity within the context of his ontology, his, his through line, his timeline. Um, so they're going to be important uh, way stations as mirrors for who he is. And the mirror analogy is important because when we look in the mirror, we identify ourselves with the reflection that we see. So by analogy, then, if a dream provides a timeline representation, that's a kind of mirroring. And it's at that point it becomes connected to a deep structure complex or number you know sequence of them perhaps um because as you know the deep structure complex forms upon a meta instinctive base and it reveals and conceals it simultaneously because the deep structure complex forms in response to the state of development that we are in set against the meta instinctive 
field of anticipation for that individual. So what you've got is an activation chain there that will include an element which is identified with and then deeper down the deep structure complex. Genean elements usually come about through adaptation, which ranges from normal to traumatic. So you can get, if you like, the presence of all of these being summated in the image of a single person or multiple people across the timeline. So it can get complicated, but it's really fundamentally simple for this reason, that the dream is a narrative and it's meant to be explored as a narrative because the narrative reveals its solution in the same way that a movie narrative should do or a mythic narrative should do. It should make sense, even if it appears not to. If it appears not to, that means we're not understanding the bandwidth of the symbols and the unfolding narrative in and of itself of the dream. As it appears to be a continuation of a past dream, then this is what I would recommend, uh, this is what I always do anyway, which is I accept the fact of the representation as it, it's recalled. I accept the connection that appears to be uh, made with the previous dream. However, I don't personally, I don't think anybody can, have enough bandwidth to penetrate into that sufficiently without another response from the, the, the dreamer internally, not the dreamer's ergo, but internally, in the form of an update and a response to the attempt that we make to interpret the dream. So the interpretation shouldn't be final, it should be provisional, and a kind of, as, as you know, a dialectical prompt for the dreamer's psyche or homeostasis as a whole to respond to our attempt at reaching into it. Um, so back to the access code then, that's the, the dialectical prompt I would suggest to the dreamer to work with and see what the response is. Because from the ego's perspective, that probably makes sense. But does it make sense internally? Uh, and then we just wait and we, we get the response from that, I would say. Right. OK. OK. Um, and the way to do that would be another dissociative method, you say? Yeah, definitely. Because that's the ground, if you like, or, or the state within which this has been presented to him. I mean, dreams are they're a dissociative state. We're in the dream ego state, not the waking ego state. The self-concept is held in common between the two. So again, all of those complexes, identified ones are the most obvious, uh, that are present in the self-concept are equally drawn into connection with the dream state as the dream ego is, because the same complexes are associated to the waking ego. The self-concept is that which links both. And then the timeline, the through line, is the ongoing narrative of the individual's life. So we can expect to see things mirrored. Um, it seems to me for what it's worth as a provisional hypothesis, this person has been shown the development of their ego across their timeline uh, and different uh, nodal points of re those relationships through the projective identification with these other people. And then in the background of that, there is the relationship to the feminine um, and how that's been timelined as well. And without wishing to make any kind of, because it would be wrong, any kind of final judgments on what all of this means, uh, if I were you and I were working with that young man, uh, I would want to know what the unconscious thinks of the interpretation so far. Obviously signalling that it's provisional. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. There's, there's a lot then to communicate back, I think. I a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I guess just a couple other other points that sort of stand out. That was, I mean, one of them certainly is that that final scene, which has almost like a um, a tricksterish element from my point of view. Yeah. Um, the guy says he's not gay, um, but apparently he's proposed to a man, um, and obviously it's a representation. It doesn't mean you know some kind of Freudian wish fulfillment thing. He wishes he proposed to a man that he once knew in the past. That kind of thing. Um, and it's not made explicitly clear whether or not it is, say, his engagement ring that he's given to the guy to wear. Um, but I thought that that was interesting as as, as a final scene to the to the dream against kind of like a backdrop, especially because in the previous dream the platonic form seems to have married the anima complex, and it's like, does this mean that the ego is itself married to 
an identified complex or married in that kind of alchemical sense. There's a big bond going on there or will be intends to be because it wasn't marriage. It was engagement. If you're going to see what I mean. So there's like a few elements there that aren't quite clicking with my own thinking. There's a betrothal, but it's not a complete state. And if we only had the, and I do, because I don't know the, the context at all of this young man's life. So everything is provisional that we're saying, mm. isn't it? Oh, yeah. You know, mm. um, if we only had that, and that's all we do have until this presentation, and if we accept that that's a move on, then who is it who looks in the mirror and falls in love with himself and therefore betroths his libido to himself? What's the name of that character from mythology? That's, that's Narcissus. Yeah. So it may be a representation of narcissism. And I don't mean in a pathological sense as such, but in a functional sense, because if we think of it that way, because we're, we're getting the timeline revealed to us, a fundamental narcissist has in common certain features with a fundamental psychopath or sociopath in that it's genetic. If, if, you know, if it's not an adaptation to the way that the life has unfolded along the timeline, there is no need to represent narcissism to a narcissist as a timeline issue unless the timeline is the key because they're fixed that way. Therefore, the timeline's not important. The, the dreams of a narcissist would show them being narcissistic because they lack the capacity to understand that they need to change or to differentiate themselves beyond what they are. They are fixed. Their character is fixed. So on that basis, then, I wouldn't see this as the dream of a genetic or character orientated narcissist. I might hold a hypothesis that there is an element of narcissism which is developed along the timeline, which is different. And the timeline between the two dreams, and again, this is limited information, uh, suggests there's been a difficulty relating to women. And that may have generated a form of narcissism, which is protective. And that will go back to what Pauline was saying yeah. when she was asking about the relationship yeah. to teachers. Yeah. Female and, and teachers. Yes, absolutely. And you see that coming through in the other female characters as well. The, the, the one with the pink hair uh, and the two females who are married to one another as well. There are elements of narcissism there. And th there may be that may be uh, deeply personal. Uh, for this young man or it may be uh, some kind of cultural commentary on the state of women in the culture or it could be both and um, obviously for young men these these days too uh, just, just as a broader point there is this um, desperation really uh, and we've sometimes used the, the expression the um, the terminal lucidity of the masculine, for example, yeah, yeah. Uh, because of the state of women and women's psychology uh, and the kind of narcissism and sense of self-entitlement that's been engendered in them, uh, you know, by, by their mothers over generations. And uh, that's creating all sorts of problems for young men in terms of how they relate to women yeah. on the outside and yeah. no doubt how they relate to um, themselves on the inside as well. So I, I think there's there's some cultural commentary going on there, too, mm. that is probably important that's for, for this young man, yeah. man's well-being. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if that's not considered, then we're completely ignoring the fact that the culture is the, is the wider ground well, with, yes. within which the figure operates that's right. so yeah. yeah there's going to be uh, definitely yeah. a relationship yeah. to that so yeah that, that's hugely important it, and, sorry. Uh, sorry i was just going to add to that, that i think we we shouldn't be put off by the woman with the pink hair either because it would be easy some maybe a woman like that would be more or we might think of her as being more obviously that way, maybe uh, more into sort of woke ideas and, uh, um, you know, uh, dare I say it, towards the, the, the left politically and into social justice and, and so on. But I, I think we have to be careful with that because women are moving in a different direction. I mean, the, the political thing is, is, is one thing, um, but I think there are, there are also a group of women these days who are doing the same thing, but they're doing it slightly differently, as in um, they're rejecting that kind of persona for themselves and they are actually ultra or hyper feminine, uh, but they're, they're, they're equally 
as destructive in the opposite direction as some of their mm. social justice warrior sisters, uh, in so much as their, their own Adlerian power drive is uh -huh. still uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and still at play. Yeah. Uh, and and it will be it'll be more disarming because of the way it's delivered okay, yeah. Yeah. to young men. Yeah. And um, it, it's an awful situation really because young men are kind of stuck in the middle of this kind of polarized presentation of the feminine. Uh, and what do they do about that? How do they relate to women okay. anymore culturally? Can, can I yes, just ask you, do you mind James, if I just bring this in that we've got the, um, you mentioned the left, if, if we can talk in yes. these terms. Yeah. The representation of the right, <clears throat> yes, feminine, yes. the feminine yes. right, yes, is exactly what you say, it and that's is. what that's what you see with with these uh, sort of right wing uh, cuties, you do, feminine, oh, hyper feminized, and yeah. there's another kind of trap there. There is, uh, uh, as you say, the the way that they present themselves mm. is a form of bait. It is, um, and there's a destructive power drive which is skewed towards the far right, which, is, hides, absolutely. Uh, which you alerted me to actually. Uh, yeah. As part of your research on, you know, on yeah. copyright, which is yeah, great. Yeah, sure. So sure. that's that's present, um, yes. and I think that's important in the dream. Though mm. um, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that. Then. We're seeing something that can be rejected. Yes. Yeah. So to put that back into, the, if the hypothesis that this young man, and again, I don't know him, so I can't, mm. you know, I, I can't say. But if the hypothesis is that he's been shown the development of his ego along this timeline through the way stations of the friends that he knew mm. the access that they as identified projective identity um complexes mm. move in and out of association to him through an access code and then perhaps they should or should not have that access code that needs to be uh, mm. demonstrated mm. and if the narcissism then is not one of character but one of adaptation and defense then what can we say about the kind of mistakes? Because that was the question, it seems, that was being raised yeah. about me having made potentially some kind of mistake. What kind of mistake would such a man make mm. in his relationship to women yeah. that might put him in a position where he's checking himself or his psyche is asking him to check himself yeah. by literally punching in the access code and finding past states and testing those past states? Yeah. So he can then update himself in the present. So what would yeah. the mistake be? I don't know. Potentially, he would have to ask himself, or you, James, as his, uh, as his therapist, would yeah. have to ask him, you know, what's the meaning of this? Literally, what yeah. is the meaning of it? Yeah. it? It's almost a Grail Castle question. It is. Mm. Um, and that's being superpositioned. Yeah. Well, the, the, the mistake in broad terms, um, if I can assume it is a mistake in the first place. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Of course yeah. we don't. Um, so we have to some extent, you know, we have to hypothesize. Um, might be that, you know, as you say, rightly say, Steve, um, with respect to the feminine, um, one form of the feminine, destructive form of the feminine, potentially, uh, is very obvious and the other is not. And so, um, and, and is absent, is not even represented, mm -hmm. uh, it seems, certainly in the, uh, you know, material that's been presented to us so far. Yeah. So it's like it's not even, that, representat that representation of women in that form is not there. So it's as if it's not being included. Yeah. And, and therefore, it, it, it's an area of unconsciousness, it really, is. potentially. It is. So when, when you get this in dreams, then you, you very often get the paradoxical pre representation of something. That's true. Which tells you yeah. this isn't what you should be considering, exactly. although it's there. Yes. It's the absence of the other. It is. As you yes. say, which is yes. demonstrably unconscious yes. and yes. not represented within yes. the dream that you yes. should look for. Absolutely. And that's the kind of thing you get with the trickster. And you mentioned yeah. about the tricksterish uh, component. We, right. We've always got to have an eye out for that. Yeah. Um, the trickster will very often give you the solution by concealing the solution inside mm. something else. Yeah. Uh, and that's like, that's the, the, yes. the puzzle that you have it to is. solve. It is. Yeah, so, and we have to, if you can just add to that, yeah. we have the the absence or the lack of emphasis of 
the female teacher in the assembly. It's as if she's there, but she's not there as well, potentially. Yeah, yeah we'd yeah. have to ask the dream. We would, we'd have, that, to, yeah. we'd have to have further clarification yeah, but, on that. But, uh, but an assembly yeah. uh, in a school yeah. situation yeah. is obviously a bringing together of components, elements. It is, yeah. And together they represent the economy yeah. of the psyche, probably, they yeah. because they represent the timeline. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a school teacher is someone who directs mm. um, and it may not be the young self that's doing the directing. Mm. It may be the misdirection that's unfolded yeah. over time and has been repeatedly uh, reinforced and experienced. Yeah. As can happen with school. School's not a positive experience, probably for most people. Mm. So we've got to be careful about projecting Jungian ideas into that and say, oh, somehow that was the, the self because everything was together and it was all assembled. And yeah. That yeah. Would, if, if that were the case, it wouldn't even appear like that because that's not a solution that's being represented. It's still part of the problem mm. Uh, mm. along the timeline. That's true. Mm. That would be my, my gut yeah, feeling yeah. on that. <clears throat> anyway. Mm. That was, all of that stuff is absolutely fascinating, guys. I think if we bring in the previous stream that um, I mentioned to you guys before, um, perhaps that uh, the, the missing element is there because obviously I don't uh, I don't know the pink haired girl or the previous mm. ex ex girlfriend, but the way it certainly comes across to me is that they're almost polar opposites in a way that the girl he originally projected his platonic form onto it's like that's that's one thing. Um, was suitable let's say or appeared to be suitable to receive his platonic form um, or the projection of the, of the platonic form but the pink haired girl certainly would not and um, what you guys said was and obviously so but there's perhaps the elements that are unconscious that would be less obviously so but would be equally as problematic let's say mm. um, and the, the, that relationship the one that appeared in the first dream with the, with the twin girls that relationship did not end very well for the dreamer at all so perhaps there's an element of the more destructive, concealed form of the feminine there. So then having the having the twin girls perhaps being simultaneously in the previous dream, the, the platonic form girl, let's, let's call her, um, and then the pink haired girl too, there's potentially then a super positioning there. That sort of came forward when, when, when you were speaking. I'm not sure if there's anything in there or not, but it looks like that other element might be present. Yeah. Yeah. Um... The psyche is quite capable of generating via the trickster a look over here uh, representation and that, that's how things can be concealed. So if you're thinking that the dreamer may be hiding the true representation of the problem from himself, that's entirely possible. And that might come about when the access code is you know, reissued, a new access code. Yeah. Because it might be that the access code, that is to say his consciousness, of his timeline thus far may have been limited to understanding his relationship to friends and peers. Uh, and they're, they're quite closely incorporated into his identity, um, but the relationship to women might be the elusive element. Yeah. And he may need to request an access code to be able to, to, to crack this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would need careful handling and respectful handling, of course, but uh, I'm sure you'll be, you'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would probably uh, require an updating of this understanding of the feminine, really, yeah. uh, and the kind of strategies that, that women have uh, to attract men um, for relationships and uh, to maybe see that very often what we're looking at is, is just a surface structure difference. But behind that will be the Freudian and the Adlerian drive uh, for resources uh, and for having relationships to men. It's just that, you know, that they're, they're being presented or dressed up differently. That that's all, really. But fundamentally, you know, uh, deep structure, uh, women will be the same. And uh, it's just a case of, of, of how you interpret what you see in the culture and, and, and the kind of uh, sense that you make of that and uh, whether it, it ends up being harmful to you or not as well. And uh, like I say, this, this sort of moved or, sh or shift by women uh, towards the far right politically and uh, to generating this ultra feminized persona is incredibly disarming. Mm -hmm. You can see the other, forgive me for saying, but you can see the other kind of presentation coming from a mile off, 
You but can. but not that. Yeah, the pink That's hair. The pink yeah. hair. Literally, yeah. you can see it coming yeah. from a mile like a beacon, off. Isn't it? it is. <laughs> yeah, it is literally like broadcasting uh, your psychology, uh, whereas the other is as well. But it's much more subtle and it's much more disarming. It's a bit like when you say, Steve, about um, say, for example, with respect to your. Um, character Lilith in the novel oh, yeah, yeah. that evil is obviously is often more disarming when it's dressed up oh, yeah. uh, and presented through beauty for example it's, it's more effective it's far it? more it's effective far, it, it, it's far, far it's more far disarming more, it's far more dangerous and far more delivered. dangerous too when it's delivered yeah. well like that's that. the line from the book isn't it yes yeah yes yeah uh, and sometimes these things have to be concisely packaged to they get do. through and they do yeah. We've got to avoid a multiplicity of explanation about yeah, that because sure, it's so course. simple. Yeah. Um that, yeah. that it is far yeah. more dangerous when yeah. it's delivered by beauty, however yeah. beauty is perceived. Yes. And the platonic form is a way of perceiving beauty. It is, yeah. Um, principally because it's undifferentiated in form, but it carries the power to project mm. um right past the ego. So we have to be careful of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, so, so the 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 presence of the pink-haired girl then um, reveals through the concealing that it's it's the obvious problem that that a young man could yeah uh, an, an obvious presentation of say a, a, perhaps yeah this young man I beg your pardon I busted then I'm awfully sorry James but the young man would it seems from what you told me about his reaction to the dream image reject that kind of woman mm. yeah. now that means by default he wouldn't reject its opposite. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. That's where the trickster would would yes. operate yeah. uh, by doing that, but yeah. it would it wouldn't be doing <clears throat> it. And this is the further paradox of a trickster to harm the young man, but to offer him an almost exasperated opportunity yeah. to say, "Can't you see? This is what you think is the problem, mm. and it might not be that." Yeah. Um, yeah. If you you think in in popular culture, I don't know, you, you you've heard of the Stepford Wives movie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, Stepford, yeah. the Stepford Wives is the kind of problem, the replacement <laughs> problem, the changeling wife, you know, um, who appears to be perfect. There's a problem there, though, and uh, that series, The Man in the High Castle, yeah. where you've got the right wing, uh, the persona was perfect, absolutely perfect in every way, but it concealed a fundamental evil. Mm. Uh, and that's the problem with the, with the far right, and we're not political. Not in the least. We're not, we're not no. interested in, Far from it. in politics no. as such, but no. the manifestation of yeah. the extreme yeah. uh, is interesting because people tend not to see it. Mm. You know, when, when they're preoccupied with one element of the polarity, they don't see the other. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that can yeah. be it. Right, right. Um, Thank you again. I, I think, think the only the only thing for my own understanding um, that sort of left up in, in in the air a little bit is when you mentioned the the, the narcissus element of the the seeming proposal to a guy. Yeah. Um, is the is the presentation of the guy important at all? Because and I, so say to me if if a patient reported a dream mm -hmm. and it was them literally marrying themselves, that would be pretty obvious. But marrying not themselves, but what appears to be a representation of themselves but in a very particular form when it seemingly they could have taken on lots of different forms i'm wondering if that's important at all or if it would just sort of blanket mean um there's a withholding here of relational energy and hence it's flowing to something within ego psychology and not therefore being released to something outside if you see what i mean yeah i would say yeah, betrothal is interesting because you can always break an engagement um but the betrothal is a, is a kind of elevated relationship, which we could say tends perhaps towards narcissism if we're thinking in that way. But if we set narcissism aside, it could also potentially mean some kind of integration as in becoming conscious. So I, did, I didn't want to communicate a negative in that, but even by suggesting that a narcissism might be present, because I, I don't believe from what you told me that it's an issue of character. No. I think it's more likely to be an issue of adaptation yeah. and probably because of uh, the Kleinians would say early object relations to the mother and then the Jungians would, would say, and therefore the anima. And we would say the relating function and the relating system, the system being the equivalent of the complex of the archetype, which is the function as that unfolds across a person's lifespan development. But it seems to be that 
he's had elements of his ontology of the development of his ego presented to him. That's really interesting. Mm. The projective identification with his peers that have been the way stations of, the, of his life. That's what made me think about the, the potential of this being a representation of narcissism, which has blinded him to what may have got in under the radar, should we say, to do with relating. Uh, because we all do it. We all attempt to compensate for things that have gone wrong earlier in our life. Um, and I, I think Paul is absolutely right, that, so to speak, that that's where the uh, the reified right wing um, yeah. glamour, cutie, perfect girl yeah. is a problem yeah. to a lot of young men. Yeah. Because she can be a predator. Oh, easily. absolutely. Yeah. Of a, yeah. Diff a different kind. Of a different kind. Yeah. 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 The Stepford wife. Mm. You know, they try to make something perfect. Mm. It's a Jekyll and Hyde, really, but towards a woman from a man. And you actually constellate something that's very unpleasant. That that can happen, but I don't want to mythologize it too much. Mm. Uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, I feel what you mean to to be to totally honest with that kind of right wing style rep representation. Um, having having grown up in this culture myself, um, and hopefully personally grown from, you know, more naive to less naive as time has gone on, you, you do see that kind of thing more and more deliberate crafting of the persona that some people certainly use. Mm. Um, and then it's reified or not, uh, not reified. It's um, held up, isn't it? To be like this, this is the feminine ideal. Mm. Um, and it's almost like got an innate shit test to it too. Yeah. Um, it's an adaptive yeah. strategy on the part of some women for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 idea about the um, the terminal lucidity of the masculine that's something we should discuss I yeah. think that would be a, a good thing to mm. to discuss between us oh definitely definitely um just I, I, just one more thing came up regarding the the dream because when you and in terms of what to do with the hypnotic trance work down down stream um you mentioned obviously with, with it being an access code obviously it is an access code but it's one that allows traveling in time and the dreamer said you know, do not get caught what's the thing do not get caught in this mortal loop um so there, there's a time travel element that the code is used for and uh, complexes come to mind with that because we know that complexes like people to be focused on the past and time travel could almost be um i mean it's not the way things are supposed to be you're not supposed to travel through time you're supposed to have a a straight teleology through life i would pre i would presume at least in representative form so there's the access code and then there's whether or not you should you should use it and what you should use it for um that seems to sort of stand out and this isn't necessarily something I'll, I'll i'll communicate with the guy necessarily but for my own thinking it's like is that is the time travel element important from the access code itself to work potentially with the hypnotic trance well what i would say is that that's actually a very important question if we take it literally as time travel, that's a mistake uh, because we can't do it. What we, we could do is make an assessment of the ontology of the ego set against the ground, as figure to ground for lifespan development, but to literally go back in time as if regressing, even to watch ourselves or to imagine ourselves in a situation in the past will put us into an ego state that identifies with the past. And I don't think that's ultimately very useful. In fact, I think it's problematical because as you know, you can strengthen complexes by doing that. The, yeah. the, the dream seems to suggest that there, there has been a timeline and we can acknowledge that and that's important. But for me, the standout is the access code. The access code brings things into relationship, into superposition now. Yeah. So we can access it right now, understand the past, but only in relationship to where we stand at the moment in order to have a future. Yeah. So uh, time travel is uh, a very dangerous activity when yeah. you do it in, in this kind of way. Well, meeting. the idea of it uh, is seductive as well, yeah. isn't it, really? It is. Um, because of all, all the connotations around that. Uh, but it might actually just represent uh, part of a repetition contortion yeah. uh, and a, a, a sort of a loop cognition, which is not helpful. Yeah. Uh, and as you rightly say, proper connection to the instincts and adaptation to the outside world and to the future is probably where this that young was, man needs to focus. It would sort it out. So yeah. if we get 
beyond the immediate presentation that's been offered as a representation, including the traps that are in there. And uh, the traps as such will be narcissistic. That, that's the key. Mm. This individual, this young man is likely, if he fails, to trap himself through narcissism. So he has to separate from that. The access code then is the key, I, I, I do believe. Yeah. Uh, as I said earlier, we need to ask the self-regulating center of the whole person I don't want to use the, the term Jungian self because that's too psychoreductive. But in effect, ask that about the meaning of the access code. Am I to deny it or am I to have a reissue of it? And if so, what do I use the reissued access code for? Yeah. Uh, and prospectively, I, I feel that it would be towards his understanding of the feminine. He already has an understanding from the dream of his ego development timeline. So there's no need to go back. We, we need to know what's happening right now yeah. and then what's important in the future. And that could be why the access code was lost. It was as if to say, this is what you know yeah. in symbolic compressed form. Yeah. And if you unpack that, you'll get your timeline and that's okay. But the access code is lost. Therefore, maybe you're not intended any further yeah. to look there. You need to look at the, the girl with the pink hair because that's the persona of something else which is otherwise concealed from consciousness by the narcissism, the adaptive narcissism. Yeah, he's not actually going to learn anymore from no. that. That's the point, isn't yeah. it? Uh, and so, you know, to, to stick uh, with that imagery uh, is, is potentially a, a problem. Yeah. Um, this is it. It, it. It's almost what's not there. Yeah, that that which is absent that is important That's for him, and it will be mind, it? yeah, and it will be the yeah. the new access code that yeah. will give him access to um, that updated consciousness, really, yeah. um, and uh, and allow him to re-regulate, update his self concept, um, you know, yeah. get get himself back on course uh, with respect to his life in the present and the future. So, uh, yeah, that, that that's that's something that I would definitely take up with him. I'd be interested. I, I would probably even present him with the question of, well, what is it that isn't there that maybe yeah. should be in there that yeah. you're not looking at? And just just seeing how much uh, of that that he can actually produce himself with yeah. a little bit of you yeah. know assistance well his instincts because they're tied to the seeking system reciprocally yeah. uh with a prompt like that will probably go off looking for it that's true uh, yes. and that will be a proper um deployment of his libido yeah from within to yeah. without is to yeah. actually find that yeah and maybe why the access code wasn't remembered mm. is that it was not intended to be remembered because yeah. you need a new one yeah the symbolism being the old one is no longer applicable no, no. No. Um, but all of that would need to be packaged and put to the person mm. so they could respond from within. Definitely. And then yeah. we're, we're updated or you're updated at that point. Yeah. That's superb. Thank you guys so much for that. I'll communicate this stuff um, or some of the stuff, obviously, with the patient. And I'll obviously let you know how things go. But that was a, a superb hearing you um, analyze that stuff in, in real time. It's very, very impressive. But um, thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. See you soon. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Take care.